All right, we are going to dive into the wondrous world of leather types. We're going to explore what the main ones are, uh, which ones work well for what projects, and basically just give you an understanding of what you're looking at you know, when you're making leather choices for projects. So let's get started. Uh, overall, there are a few different very popular types of leather that you can commonly find and they're usually um, cow and buffalo are the most popular. They make up about 67% of the leather you know, that you'll find in most places um, and also what's produced in the world. Next we have sheep and lamb, that's about 12%. Uh, pig leather makes up about 11%. Uh, goat leather is about 10%. And then all the other exotics make up the remaining 10%. That's like your alligator, kangaroo, elk, um, shell cordovan, fish, any, basically any other type of leather that's out there um, is in that exotic category. So that's the broad types that are out there. Uh, within them, there are some different processing techniques that are used, some different tanning approaches. So we'll take a look at those today, um, as well as a few common you know, types of leather that you've likely encountered or will, um, either in projects that you've worked on or projects that you will work on. So, let's clear the way and get started with the first. Perfect. Um, and as we are looking at that, let's take a look at this diagram. Uh, this is from a leather crafting um, studio. It was kind enough to share it with us. And it essentially looks at the hide of an animal and where the leather comes from within that hide. So I'll kind of turn this and show you here. So in general, um, let's, let's say this is a cow, for example. The best leather comes from this area here, which is pretty much in the center of the back. And that's for a few different reasons. When you think about animals, they're living you know, creatures, and they're out in you know, the environment. So maybe they're scraping up against fences, against trees. And so these parts that are more near you know, their movable areas and where they may brush up against um, other things in day-to-day -day life, will naturally have you know more nicks and scratches and cuts and things like that and so the area that is you know least exposed you know to those things day to day typically the higher back areas um, yield generally better leather um, and also as well as the thickness and the quality of the fibers there so that's a very qu quick look at that but essentially the closer you go in to the hide uh, the better the leather is going to be as we are looking at our first piece of leather let's check out vegetable tanned so this is a super common leather. Uh, use it, it, you can find it used in many types of goods and bags and accessories and clothing. Um, it's exceptionally good for tooling and stamping because you could see it's relatively thick. And depending on how thick it is, it could be stiff. Um, it could also be conditioned to be a little softer, but it's a very malleable, um, very you know, durable leather. Uh, that takes impressions very well and also is really nice for uh, projects and finished goods because it wears well and develops a really rich patina over time. So this is a very common leather. You've probably seen it everywhere um, and used it. If not, highly recommend it to, to use it. Uh, vegetable tan leather is excellent. Uh, and this is a cow leather um, and vegetable tanning is a process. And so the primarily the tanning processes we'll look at are vegetable tanned and chrome tanned. In vegetable tanned, uh, vegetable tannins are used for an extended period of time, you know, usually weeks to a month or more, and that is what's used to essentially you know, prepare the leather for use. And it's a long process, but has a very you know, unique finished look and feel to it. Uh, whereas chrome tan, we'll look at that in a moment, um, is a different process. and. Uh, it, it yields a much softer leather. The process is also much faster, you know, days, you know, maybe a day or two. So this is vegetable tanned. Uh, cowhide leather is excellent. Uh, next we will look at a full grain leather because we often hear full grain, you know, top grain, genuine leather, different qualities. And so it's important to get an idea of what those look like. So for full grain, uh, we use this leather portfolio as an example. And if we look at this and get real close to the, the grain texture in it, we could still see some of that original, you know, texture of those grains and kind of what it looks like in terms of 
up close pattern of it. And there are definitely scratches on it, which comes from using something like this. But if we look, those original little green pattern of the, the hide is still there. And that's preferred. Uh, there's top grain um, and there's full grain. And then we get into kind of like genuine leathers and bonded leather, leathers and things like that. And so next we'll check out genuine leather. And so this is something that we've probably all seen in a department store or for getting a belt, something that says genuine leather on it. And we think, great, genuine leather, it's real. And to a degree it is, but it's not necessarily a high quality leather. Um, it could have leather, you know, that's kind of basically a tiny, tiny bit of, you know, not great leather. Um, it's still genuine. It's basically the, like the least real leather that's out there. But because it says genuine, uh, people kind of get excited about it until they learn you know, what genuine is. So here's just an example of it. Uh, you could see the surface is more impressed upon. Um, it's not like a natural grain in there. And even the back of it as well. You can see it looks very different than our vegetable tan leather over here. It's almost, this genuine one is almost like mechanized in a way where the, um, the surface texture is impressed upon it. And so it will not wear very well. It won't last very long. Um, it can look cool and it's generally inexpensive. So if you have a need for it, you know, that can work. But if you're looking to produce something uh, that's very, you know, durable long term, you know, genuine leather would probably not be your number one choice. And next, let's take a look at bonded leather. So bonded leather is kind of like the scrapple, if you will, of leather. And they essentially take it, grind up all the little leather bits that are left over, mix it up with some materials that some glues and adhesives and other you know, materials and basically bond it together into a leather-like material. That could then be cut and finished and stamped in with different, you know, surface textures or whatnot. But um, essentially, I mean, it's leather bits, but it's bonded together with glues and adhesives. So it's not going to get you a super quality, you know, product through and through. Um, again, inexpensive, so it can have some opportunities there. Uh, but essentially that's what bonded leather is. A bunch of leather scraps cut up, mixed, glued together, and then pressed into a shape and texture that looks kind of like leather and has kind of like leather in it, um, but is not full, you know, real leather. Nonetheless, we come across that a bunch. Um, and let's take a look at suede. So suede is interesting, and we'll see this shoe in that it's got a little fuzzy texture to it and you can kind of see here the material is like this little grain to it and what that is is essentially the original grain of the leather that has not been sanded down so those are the fibers uh, in the in the surface of the leather and sometimes they're brushed that kind of bring them out uh, but it, it is uh, a more you know, on, um, on sanded leather than say like a vegetable tan, because here with the suede, you know, those little fibers that still exist. Gives it a unique texture and uh, gives it some unique properties. Um, typically suede does require more care just because the fibers are exposed. And so you have to be gentle in terms of exposure to water, how they're conditioned, how they're clean, usually a different process than other leathers, uh, but can look very good. And, uh, People use them a lot. Shoes, clothing, bags, accessories, belts. That is suede. Next, we have some chrome tan leather. So we talked about our vegetable tan, and that's this leather over here, you know, thick, sturdy. Over here, we have our chrome tan. And with chrome tan, there's a million possibilities to it. If we look, it's a very soft, flexible leather. And uh, as such, it can be used, you know, for different things like clothing linings, you know, different types of clothes. Um, it's, you can get it lighter, you can get it thinner. You can also print all kinds of surface textures and colors into it. And because chrome tan is quicker to produce, you know, it can be days versus a vegetable tan, which can be weeks to months. Um, it's easier to manufacture all different types. Costs generally, generally lower. And uh, 
chrome tan leather, you know, you'll see everywhere as well. So it can be a great option for you know, different types of clothing and accessories that may require a more flexible uh, leather or one that has a unique pattern to it. Uh, something that we do see often that's chrome tan is animal hides. And so here's a deer skin. Um, it's been chrome tanned. Again, very soft, very supple, which also brings out some of the properties of deer skin, which is that it's a very soft um, hide, you know, one processed as well. So this is just another example of what chrome tan leather can look like and, you know, can feel incredible on different projects and work really, really well. Next, we have a faux leather. And so we've all heard of faux leather. We've heard of vegan leather, uh, maybe PU leather, short for polyurethane. And what all that essentially means is that it is plastic. It is a plastic leather. It is not real leather. Um, it's more a marketing term, you know, so that they could say, hey, it's leather, uh, even though it's really not. Uh, so here's an example of, you know, a PU leather pouch. And essentially, it looks good. You know, it does the job. It's soft. It's flexible. You know, not totally unlike uh, the flexibility of a chrome tan, but exceedingly different in terms of the material properties, uh, the quality, and how long it'll last. Uh, since it is plastic, it'll generally wear down, you know, from use in just a couple years. It'll dry out. It'll begin to crack and things like that. Um, so again, uh, this type of a PU leather or faux leather isn't really leather. You know, essentially it's just plastic. So I mentioned it here since we've probably come across it, um, but it's not really leather at all. Next, we have some pattern leather, and we'll take a look at our chrome tan again. You can see, you know, this has a unique pattern in, in the surface of it. Uh, there are some leathers that you could do that um, in printing designs and logos and textures and things like that. There are even some um, design houses that produce luxury handbags and such that will design their own harder surface texture. It's almost like a plasticky surface that will then have an imprinted logo or pattern that's unique to that brand. Um, we see that in things like you know, Safiano leather, um, which is essentially leather you know, with a plastic coating on it that has a texture to it. Uh, we do have natural leathers as well, uh, such things as like a pineapple leather. Um, there are different plant-based leathers that are coming out. And some of them do use a mix of leather fibers and natural fibers. Um, again, it's kind of like a faux leather, where it's getting into the area of it's not really leather, but it kind of looks and acts like it. And uh, so some of them, some may be worth looking at over time and can be great. And then we have hair on leather. So you've probably seen these uh, sometimes, you know, we use, you'll find them in rugs, you'll find them in clothing. And it's essentially, it's leather that has not had the hair removed. So when we look at vegetable tan leather, super, super, you know, smooth, essentially the hair has been removed and the top part, you know, has been sanded down and make this really smooth, workable surface. With hair on leather, that hair is still there and has not been removed during the tanning process. So that can produce a leather that is still workable, yet the front has the original hair on top. And that could be aesthetically useful, you know, it could be something, you know, functionally useful as well, depending on what you're making. But um, it's pretty cool as an option that's out there. And uh, that's what this is. So this is a shorter hair uh, leather that we've got. And there's an example here that's got a longer hair to it. And it all depends on the project that you're looking for. But that is essentially what hair on leather is. Um, versus what you'll typically come across when you're buying leather, you know, which is, you know, hair off or the hair that has been removed during the tanning process. And lastly, we have our oil tan leather. And this has a light oil tanning to it where it's pretty thick. Um, it's, it's flexible. Yeah, there is some oils that have been put into the surface during the tanning process. And uh, some of you can get that have even heavier oils. Uh, somewhat lighter, but just another option that you can keep in mind uh, that you can look for oil, oiled leather as well. And that's the leather. So a quick run through of the popular types you may see. If you're interested in more, uh, let me know and uh, enjoy crafting.